Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Into the Vault, the show where we reach back into the Disney vault, pull out a movie, and find out if it was a hidden treasure or if it was locked away for our own good. I'm your host Garrison McCraw and what is this creature in the room with me? It's alive! It's alive! Uh, hey. it's a- oh, it's Jaden McGrail. Hey, it's me. I'm glad you're alive. Me too. <laughs> I would suck if I was dead. I know. <laughs> I'd have to do like a whole mini sewed thing because it's one person. And... I know. You don't want to do another mini sewed. <laughs> I just did one. You just did one. <laughs> it's I- not time yet. No. You'll want to do one eventually. It's not. It's not time. Especially because Halloween only deserves one right now. Only deserves one mini sewed? Yeah. Like Halloween yeah. only deserves one mini sewed because all the rest of them are like big deal. Oh, movies. yeah, that's right. Does that make sense? Take that, Halloween. You only get one, and we've already done it. <laughs> well, Christmas should be the same way, right? <laughs> like only one mini sewed. So today we're talking about the. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> We're hit, talking about the hit 2012 film Frankenweenie. Yeah, Jane, what what do you know about Frankenweenie? What do you? I I remember the commercials playing over and over and over on every on Disney Channel and on Nickelodeon and every place. It was just the commercials for this. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I I experienced something very similar. Uh, I watched a lot of commercials, and it looked really interesting, but I never actually got around to, you know, watching it. Yeah, because I was a kid. I didn't decide where I went. Yeah. It wasn't my choice. <laughs> I mean, 2012. No, for you, you, yeah, you don't get to choose. Yeah. All I know about it really is that it's kind of a, like, Frankenstein-esque uh, story. Wait, what? Frankenweenie? Is about Frankenstein? Crazy. I thought it was just about hot dogs. <laughs> because Franks and weenies. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Franks and weenies. <laughs> Thank you. I will be here probably another time shortly. <laughs> Other than that, I don't really know too much about it. So in front of you, I placed a poster. Yeah. So let's see if we can together uh, decipher... What this movie might be about. Uh, okay, well, Frank and Weenie is obviously the dog. There's a dog with all the classic Frankenstein things. Bunch of stitches, the bolts in the neck, so on. And it's just all black and white. So I bet it'll be very, like, true to the Boris Karloff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. interpretation. Uh, and a couple of characters in the back, one with a shovel. I'm guessing that's the Dr. Frankenstein character. So is the dog Frankenweenie or is, is it he Frankie- Frankenweenie's monster? monster? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so this would be Dr. Frankenweenie. This would be the creature. <laughs> so, so Frankenweenie's the man. <laughs> is there a bride of Frankenweenie's monster? <laughs> it's a poodle. Oh, with eyelashes. And a bow. Oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's Igor, there's a little girl, there's like a bat or a dragon or something. Yeah, uh, there is a flying creature in the background very, of this poster. It's very Tim Burton. It's very claymation. I'm excited. Yeah, I didn't mention that. It is a Tim Burton movie, and it's a claymation. Yeah, it's a claymation yeah. Tim Burton movie. Which he's kind of known to do for Disney, except uh, yeah, it Nightmare Before Christmas isn't... Wasn't really his. <laughs> it's Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, directed by someone else. Yeah. Did he actually direct this so one? So he or... actually directed this one. So it's weird that it's not Tim Burton's Frankenweenie, but he took yeah. credit for Nightmare Before Christmas. Which wasn't his. <laughs> Did he do any other Disney stuff? Uh, Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland Alice 2. Alice in Wonderland 2, which nobody saw. <laughs> Twist in Time. Yep. Is that That's what it's called? One. It's something time. I think it's Through the Looking Glass. Yeah, Twist in Time. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, and then he also did Dumbo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's got a corner on those live actions. Yeah. He also did something else, but I'm going to save that one for trivia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, but I don't think there's anything else we can really determine about this movie from any of this. Yeah. Any final thoughts? 
Um, I I'm just excited. I pretty I'm pretty sure that I would know the entirety of the plot based just on the name and the commercial. But I'm excited for a fun Halloween romp. Me too. Yeah. Let's go. And we are back. We have just finished watching Frankenweenie. Mm -hmm. Jaden, I have a question. Yeah. Is stop motion magic? Yes. It's it's just magic, right? Yeah. Like I understand yeah. I understand 2D. Some mm -hmm. guy sits down and he draws on a piece of paper and then and draws then it on, happens. And then he draws on another piece of paper and they do that for like 5 years and then a movie is made. Mhm. Mm but claymation. The, Insane. Uh, how? It it doesn't make any there, sense. There's times there's like water dripping off. I'm like how do you how do you like take a drop of water and then go all right stay there drop of water yeah or like whenever characters cry or anything or when there's stuff on fire or explosions so they go it makes in, no sense so they have, they have to like go in especially if the facial expression changes mid cry because if you're crying yeah. your facial expression changes it's like all right character model head remove that character model head next character model head with a tear moved on the correct placement on that mm -hmm. next character model head remove that character model head new character model head with the tear placement that correctly matches that character like the next bit mm -hmm. i i i do not it's, it's so much it is so cool i feel like claymation just doesn't get used enough anymore like Oh, uh, I mean, I understand why, because it's, why would you when it's easy to just CG computer animate, like, something and not spend millions of seconds and <laughs> hours just taking a picture of frame by frame by frame. Right. Okay, so the last one might have been Early Man? No, that can't be right. Wasn't there the the... One where it was like, I'm Bigfoot, and I'm played by yeah, did that Hugh come Jackman. Out? I think so. Okay. Yeah, in like the huge slew of Bigfoot movies that came out. Yeah, and there was like like, like 17 uh -huh. Bigfoot Yeti films. 5 and 17, the same number. Yeah, right? 5 and 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about this movie. So we oh, open up. Oh, it was up. so good. Yeah. It was so good. I think this is my favorite movie that we've sat down and watched together. I think so. It I wins. might agree with you, but I'm going to save my review for the end segment. So we open up, and there's a little boy, Victor Frankenstein, mm -hmm. who has a dog that he really loves. Named Sparky. That's and right. it's like typical suburban family in like the suburbs of this place called New Holland. Yeah, uh, New Holland, that's the only bit about this movie where I still have, like, a lot of questions of, why New Holland? Right, right, because isn't it, I, I mean, I know Frankenstein original is supposed to take place, like, somewhere. Like, Switzerland. Or... Like, Eastern Europe-y, but not Holland, right? No, it's not Holland. Bavaria, all <laughs> the same. And the city itself has, like, a Hollywood sign, but it says New Holland, New Holland. in the mountain. Yeah. I, I don't... I, I'm not quite sure what that's doing there. Uh, so if anyone has any answers, please... Let me know. Let, let us know. Yeah. So, Victor, he loves making these movie... His little home movies. Yeah, well, he's just, like, a really, really smart kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um very very nerdy style like nobody likes him because he's just too ahead of his time i guess and and sparky's pretty much his only friend and goes with him like to school and he, does these movies and with every, him it and... does the movies with him makes these weird stop motion inside a stop motion movies yeah i was gonna i was gonna bring that up him. victor he make again he makes these home movies like his toys and with sparky and he does it in like a stop motion -y way like you do with toys but we're in a stop motion movie so is this this universe's version of just a regular movie no no because they show like a live action they show um dracula right like christopher old Lee's christopher Dra lee dracula uh-huh so so i guess not they also have unless that's like the weird thing in that universe they're like 
Whoa. Whoa. This, why don't they do live action more? Yeah. <laughs> it probably hurts to get actors. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but, but they all live in suburbia, and things kind of start to get weird when there's this new science teacher, right? Yeah, there's a, there's a new science teacher who's... I want to say, first off, perfect design one of the things that i love about animation specifically claymation is the fact that the character designs can just get really really weird and like pablo picasso-y and this guy's face was so strange i loved it so much it was modeled off of like vincent price Re- yeah yeah it, like like the idea is like vincent vincent price and it looked like that mixed with like a old snidely whiplash kind uh-huh. of a like m- mustache twirly yeah yeah very mu- i mean he wasn't an evil character no no no. but, but like, he certainly did look like one yeah uh i liked his teeth he had like way too many teeth <laughs> and anyways this science teacher he he decides to announce like this big science fair where all of the kids should participate, and all the kids get like super duper hyped about like, this. Like all the kids are so into the They're... science ex- science project, they're like, "Yeah, we have to win this." They they don't even really say what happens when you win. No, no, they do. They're like, "We have to win." Why? There's a trophy. Oh yeah. And they say it like 20 times. Like, I'm going to get that trophy. It's going to be me with the trophy. <laughs> so that's the stakes. Um, and of course, uh, Victor is very smart. So he has a pretty good chance yeah. of doing science, <laughs> I guess. Um, but his dad, uh, Victor's dad's like, maybe you can do something else too. Like maybe take up baseball. So you can, like, see other people, Mm -hmm. and you're not just in the attic all day forever. Yeah. And Victor takes Um, him up on it. But before he leaves the school that day, this one weird girl with a cat comes up to him and is like, Hey, my cat had a dream about you, and it's a bad omen. And I know this because uh, my cat, Mr. Whiskers, pooped the first letter of your name. First letter of your name. And, then, and that's the bad omen. So there's a bad omen hanging yeah. over this baseball game. And then shows various examples of other omens that have happened. And it's like, when the cat did this... Uh, Somebody fell down a well, so yeah. on. Um, so we we, show, we arrive at the baseball game. So Victor had taken his dad up on the offer. And Victor starts using like the science teacher's like science talks to help him... To motivate him. Motivate him to... to Hit the score, baseball. Score, touch, bat. A touch, uh, a heads up. A, a, a touch bat. Uh-huh. Yeah. A cat bat. A cat bat. <laughs> uh, and, and he starts running the bases, and Sparky, who of course he's there, gets really excited and runs after... The ball. The ball into the street. And I'm so mad about this because I should have known... Coming into a movie about a dog that's reanimated, like Frankenstein's monster, that he would die. But I didn't put two and two together. <laughs> and and it, it made me cry. <laughs> that it, did happen. It, it made me cry. I don't know why I didn't think, oh, if I'm watching a movie about a dead dog, the dog's probably going to have to die. <laughs> didn't think of that yeah they have a they have a whole dog funeral uh with a big big dog headstone with yeah. a with a cross made out of like bones, bones. uh-huh and, it, and it's an entire dog pet cemetery with like fire hydrant gravestones it's so cool yeah looking i, th- I think it might have been an intentional reference to pet cemetery like yeah. the horror movie mm-hmm. It felt very cross between like Pet Cemetery and like obviously like Graveyard from Nightmare Before Christmas with the slippery slopey yes. mountain. Yeah, it felt it felt very reminiscent. It was such a cool aesthetic. Oh, this film by the way is entirely in black and white. Too. Yeah. Super freaking cool. 
<laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Don't make me do more editing than I have to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Um. But at school the next day, the science teacher like has like a frog, like a dead frog, and is talking about how even though the frog is dead, through electricity, it can like the muscles like are all still like active, and they can still move with the electricity. Like he says, all the parts are still there. It's just missing like. Yeah, so uh, the brain so waves. Victor like gets the idea to reanimate his dead dog, and so he does. Yeah, he just <laughs> it, it's a pretty long segment of him just like going to the graveyard, digging up his dog, taking it back, <laughs> setting up a whole experiment, and also in this town, uh, it's established that there are storms like pretty much every night. And the kids theorize it's because of a windmill that's up on the hill, like, generating electricity in right. the air. Mm-hmm. It's pretty funny. They're like, yeah, my uncles got hit by lightning twice in this town. Yeah. It's such a funny universe. I like it so much, this weird suburb. Oh, yeah, because everyone is insane. Yeah. Every single person is their own variety of insane. I know. It's so funny. It. Burden does, like, an amazing job with caricatures and an amazing job with suburbia. So the lightning hits. Uh, Sparky does raise from the dead. He's reanimated. And he tries to hide it from, like, his parents and the rest of the town because he's like, they won't understand. But Sparky's excited to be alive. And so he goes and he flirts with the the neighbor's dog who's a French poodle who you predicted. I, I, I did not know. I yeah, promise I did not we know were, about this. We were just joking about it, like, right in the intro, and, and it was there. It was just a poodle with eyelashes. Just a poodle with eyelashes. But it gets even better, because I looked right at the poodle's design. I'm like, oh my goodness, they're going to make her, like, bride a Frankenweenie. Yeah, because because it's like a like big a poof. black, poofy uh, poodle head of fur. And, of course, it, it's the perfect silhouette mm-hmm. for the zigzags of the black yeah. and white. So when Sparky, like, sees her again and they, like, touch noses, like, a bolt... Dog kiss. A dog kiss. A dog kiss. A jolt of electricity, like, goes from his bolts through the nose onto her and then she gets, like, the classic design it's, on her head. Yeah. It's such... So great. So great. There's another kid, um, uh, a weird kid named Edgar. Edgar Gore. Igor, who notices Sparky and is like, ooh, oh, someone reanimated Creatures from the Dead. He, Victor probably doesn't want me telling anyone about that, uh, so gosh. I'm going to blackmail him. Edgar? So in the original, in like classic Frankenstein, Igor is like a helpful, a little bit annoying, only sometimes, just like works for the boss man and this guy, Edgar Sucks. Garrison, I'm, yeah, <laughs> he, he's the worst person ever. <laughs> and I mean that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. He, his fingers bothered me. His teeth bothered me. His voice bothered me. If they cut him entirely out of the movie... I would be happy. I think it would be better for it. So Edgar goes to Victor's house and is like, Victor, you got to tell me how you how you brought Sparky back to life. I'm going to tell everyone and your parents that you brought a dog back to life. And Victor's like, fine, fine. So so they go. Igor goes to the pet store and buys like a dead goldfish and they run the experiment again because thunderstorms happen every night. And the goldfish comes back to life, but it's invisible? Yeah, something went wrong, and it didn't pop up as a fully reanimated fish. Like, this thing was invisible, but also it was, like, very bitey. Yeah, it was vicious. It became, like, a piranha almost. I don't understand why it went invisible, because electricity does that, I guess. It went wrong. (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah. you're right. It did go wrong. And when he first is invisible, it's like you can see a skeleton of the fish. And then it becomes like fully invisible. So there's like two other kids trying to do their science experiment. Uh, and one gets injured. So that kid's mom 
goes to the school board and is like, this science teacher is dangerous. Our kids are doing experiments and getting hurt. And all the parents are like, yeah, he's saying things we don't even understand. He was talking about how Pluto isn't even a planet. When I was a kid, Pluto was a planet. What's real, scientists? Yeah, so they fire him and he's just replaced him with like the gym teacher or something. And and um, Victor chases him out as he's like Lupin, Remus Lupin style, packing up all of his stuff. And um, he's talking about like, needing he he asked the teacher for advice and he's like hey i did an experiment and it went right the first time then it didn't go right the second time and the teacher was like well did you love your experiment the first time which in context of course yes he did it's his dog versus a fish but also how would this teacher it's a weird thing for a teacher to say out of random, you know, like, like just if it was out just of the like, blue. It was like the classic, like, which batteries last the longest experiment yeah, where you put like, it on those push lights. Or like a potato clock where it's like, well, did you love it the first time? It's like, yes, I loved my potato clock. But the second one, I hated it. I hated it. I hated my potato just clock. the wrong potato. But the teacher is like well if you loved it the first time and you didn't love what you were doing the second time then you changed the variables so it's not the same experiment think about that i'm out and then he leaves (laughs) forever Uh uh-huh for the rest of the movie uh meanwhile igor edgar is sharing his invisible fish with everybody and it's getting him into a lot of trouble yeah because people are now starting to ask about the dog being alive again and finding out about Victor because he can't keep his mouth shut. And they're also getting extremely jealous. Every kid is just being super competitive over this science fair. And they're going crazy. Yeah, so the kids all find out about, like, the uh, reanimated dog and are like, well, we're our experiments aren't going to be any good if we don't reanimate our own animals. Yeah, let's just totally steal his idea. And reanimate our own animals. So they break into his house. Yes. And find the attic where he brought Sparky back to life and just copy his notes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they each, like, respectively go to their own homes and try with different animals. Like, one Mm -hmm. kid gets a thing of sea monkeys and throws it in a pool. One goes to the cemetery where his... Um, hamster p- died. There was one who was getting his turtle. Uh, the turtle's name was Shelly, by the way. Super which is, fun. Uh, Super fun. Which is a both a great turtle joke and Shelly. A great Frankenstein joke. Yes, two yeah. things. Um, and then the weird girl with the cat. The cat brings in a bat. And they all set up like different experiments, but of course, not everyone has their heart in it. So they all go tragically wrong. The rat becomes a were rat almost. Yeah. Looking thing. Uh huh. The the hamster comes out all mummified mm-hmm. uh, and wrapped in gauze, so it's like a mummy reference. Yep. The turtle come uh, like is mixed with Miracle Grow. And becomes a giant kaiju style Godzilla mm-hmm. monster. And the sea monkeys are just highly aggressive. So it's either a Gremlins reference or a Gilman creature of the Black Lagoon reference. It's probably a little bit of both. It's probably both. And my favorite is the the bat that was brought back by the cat is bit by the cat right before the lightning strikes them. So they morph together into a cat bat. <laughs> You know, like Dracula, how he is a half bat, half half cat. cat. So we have our collection of various like movie monsters Mm -hmm. of different varieties. Uh, Some of the classic like Universal Monster line, others being Godzilla. Yeah, Uh, the turtle. The turtle. It's just the one. (laughs) It's just the one. Um, Meanwhile, Sparky was hanging out in the attic and... Victor's parents found him. And he got scared. And he got scared and ran away to this carnival that's happening. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and it's just a whole lot of confusion as everybody looks for him. And then the monsters attack. Yep, the monsters are all attacking the carnival. And Victor shows up looking for Sparky and decides to use his science to <laughs> yep. systematically kill off every one of these monsters. Yeah, except for one of them. The one that the, the hamster mummy just get squashed. <laughs> he just get stepped on. <laughs> yeah, that was. It's it's funny. Uh, the the mummy hamster and Godzilla turtle are about to have like a showdown. But one is a Godzilla and one is a hamster. Yeah, so he just he just gets stepped on. And he is straight up dead. <laughs> He's just so small. <laughs> uh. But other than that, yeah, they kind of systemically go through and beat back every... It's like, these sea monkeys are freshwater sea monkeys, so we just have to give them salt. So they, mm-hmm. like, have popcorn, and they, like, have the... What's another one? Uh, the turtle uh, hits a thing. The turtle gets electrocuted yep. uh, and zaps back to a small thing. Mm-hmm. Which, like, okay, so Frank... Frank and Weenie, aka Sparky, like he he died and he came back, and he gets to survive through all of this. But Victor is like purposefully eliminating all of these other dead pet cemetery friends that have been brought back by his classmates, and I just I think it's a little bit unfair, you know. <laughs> It's like, yeah, their heart wasn't in the right place. No, those were their pets, too. <laughs> but Sparky's not trying to murder people. Yeah, he's just running around. The bride of Frank and Weenie <laughs> cat, dog yeah. uh, gets gets grabbed by the bat cat. Cat bat. Uh, and, brought and brought to the, to the windmill. windmill. Uh, so everybody, and- like, runs up there. Yep, and the townsfolk are like, oh my goodness, there's so many monsters. Let's become an angry mob, because that's what happens in these movies. Mm-hmm. And they go up there, so Sparky... Sparky and- runs up there because... Victor runs up there because everybody's chasing each other. Um, and they're running through the windmill trying to catch up with um, Winona Ryder, because that... She's in the movie. She's in the movie. And her dog. And the angry mob accidentally lights the windmill on fire because, of course, that's supposed to happen. And then they have just a giant kerfluffle of people trying to save each other from a burning windmill. Victor ends up getting out and Sparky gets out. Like, everyone gets out. Everyone gets out uh, except for Victor and then Sparky runs back in and saves him. After saving him, uh, Bat Cat comes back out, pulls Sparky back in, and during this final showdown, uh, Sparky like recoils in fear. Yeah. And the Bat Cat's like about to to like kill Sparky, but luckily, when... yeah, this is seriously one of the most gruesome thing. Like Oogie Boogie's death. I think pales in comparison to... More like impales? More like impales. One of the rafters, uh, one of the wooden rafters from the windmill, like, becomes unjostled because of the fire and just straight skewers Batcat. And we see it. Yeah, we see that the silhouette of that Batcat. We just, we just see, like, the, like, they just show us, like, Sparky there and then a big old stick yeah and then bat cat like halfway on it poor mr whiskers and that cat started out alive yeah it started out the only reason it became a bat cat was because it bit the thing it wasn't already dead so if anything sparky died and came back to life like like the bat cat just dies (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> poor poor girl who owns Mr. Whiskers. <laughs> Mr. Whiskers was the one handing out omens too. Yeah. Warning people about their Mr. Fate. Whiskers should have listened to to himself. Mr. Whiskers got no warning. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe there was a W that morning and Whiskers was like, I'm not showing anyone this one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, it's like, oh no. <laughs> uh, that's so, funny. so Sparky, so the windmill collapses, and the next morning they are able to get in and find Sparky dead again. And I guess they can't recreate the experiment because there's not going to be any storms anymore because yeah. the windmill's gone. But luckily they're adults, which means that they all have cars. Yeah, so the adults are very thankful for Sparky for for saving everyone or whatever happened. Uh-huh. And uh, all jumpstart their cars. all Like, all their cars help jumpstart Sparky. And Sparky is alive again and everyone's happy. And, and he, he gives his, his wife a little dog kiss. A dog kiss and that's the end. And it is so good it is a great great movie um Jaden, you want to know some fun facts and some trivia boy do i there's a lot of other references to various disney properties and things throughout this movie uh there's a poster for Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea oh really yeah i didn't see that at all couldn't uh, possibly have seen that one. Not me. No, sir. <laughs> there was a movie theater playing Bambi in yep. the background. There was a newspaper that said something along the lines of, Man with Scissors for Hands wins topiary contest. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, there was a headstone in the pet cemetery that said, Goodbye, kitty. <laughs> <laughs> that one's funny. Um. Yeah, there was all the other references we mentioned and talked about already, like uh, the ones Universal to, Monsters. Yeah, the Monsters, and... Bride of Frankenstein, uh, the classic Frankenstein uh, story. There was w- one of the his classmates uh, was specifically designed to kind of look like Boris Karloff, who played the original yep. Frankenstein's monster and the mummy, mm-hmm. which is funny because he ends up wrapped up in mummy. As the mummy. <laughs> At one point, so mm-hmm. that's a that's a Boris Karloff reference. There was a lot of uh, actors in this movie that are like Tim Burton regulars. You have like Catherine O'Hara, who who played the mom. Yep. Uh, Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder. Martin Short. I can't name any other Tim Burton movie that he's been in, but he seems like a very Tim Burton esque actor. <laughs> Anyways, like Just Jack because... Frost could have been a, oh my God. a Tim Burton <laughs> Well, to bring it in a weird full circle, he also voiced the he also voiced the one neighbor who was the Burgermeister. The Burgermeister who was, Meister Burger. Who was definitely a reference to the Santa Claus is coming to town yeah, villain. The the guy who wanted a yo yo. Yep. It's just so bad. <laughs> <laughs> the science teacher, I might mispronounce this, but Mar- Martin Landau, who uh, was also in Tim Burton's movie, Ed Wood. Uh, so so there was a lot of, like, Burton regulars running through here. Christopher Lee was in, uh, like, some background footage, and Christopher Lee's done a lot of Burton movies mm-hmm. as well. But, Jaden, did you know that Frankenweenie is based off of another property? I think I did because yeah, it Frankenstein. Came... Uh yeah, no, that's a universal property. Yeah, but it's based off of that. Ooh, you're right. <laughs> no, there's actually another Frankenweenie. Mhm. I saw that when uh when Frankenweenie stopped playing and then another Frankenweenie popped up as the recommended on Disney Plus. <laughs> Yeah, it, Frank and Weenie originally was a 1984 short film also directed by Tim Burton. It was mm. about half an hour long. Had Shelley Duvall in it. I love Shelley Duvall. I love Shelley Duvall. But here's where things kind of get weird. And I'm mm. Burton was fired like after the movie was finished filming. He was fired from the original Frankenweenie uh, because the studio said that he was wasting company resources and that the film wasn't suitable for the audience they were going for. And it was like yeah. supposed to be released like as a pre like before, like I think a re-release of the, like the Jungle Book or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I think ended up just being thrown on like the DVD extras of 
it might have been like Nightmare Before Christmas or something like that. Like it was just put somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So it's weird that they like fired him and then nearly thirty years later, like, hey, do you wanna do you wanna maybe do that again? But longer? We promise we won't fire you this time. It's even weirder because the original looked like it was live action and then and then this one was stop motion, which is an even bigger place to spend company time and resources <laughs> so if that's what they were worried about like if we want to be technical the original frank and weenie did financially better by comparison because the original had a one million dollar budget and made 11 million dollars mm-hmm. whereas this one had a f- nearly 40 million budget and only made 80 million dollars so that's like times 11 versus times two but i don't know i i think it's a smart decision to release it this was released in 2012 Mm -hmm. you had nightmare before christmas you had hocus pocus halloween town halloween town 2 Coraline. you had monster house you had all of these weird like semi-scary kids movies that were coming out so i guess they might have taken that story that they had already released and been like well this is more appropriate for this time you know like it was almost as if they made it too early in a sense yeah i'm wondering if they were trying to capitalize on because there was another like successful claymation horror movie that like not horror but like dark halloween like stop motion movie that same year that was paranorman that's right that's right. Maybe I was getting their commercials mixed up, too. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand this. I'm a kid. <laughs> I don't, I don't um, get what's happening. I'm just a kid. So, yeah, there w- seemed to be a weird, like, almost a resurgence of that kind of thing in that time. Or within those that two-month period when both those movies came out. <laughs> hey, Jaden, you know what it's yeah. time for? What? Now it's time for, hey, if we wanted to make a ride for this, what would we make it? My famous segment. Yep. I uh, love this segment. So if this movie like came out and was super popular and the Disney company was like, we have to make this into a ride. We've got to do it. <laughs> Nothing Ask not bad ever happens, happens to, to the Kennedy. Ask not what <laughs> Disney can do for you. Ask what you could do for Disney. <laughs> stupid. No, uh, stupid. stupid. <laughs> No, I'm keeping it in, though. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if we were to make a make something for this, what would it be? Would it be a ride, a hotel, a show? I Where don't Where would know. we put it? I don't know. Yeah, because this movie is so weird. I think the only place, because I can't really see it. It's too modern. It, yeah, it's too modern. I The only kind of ride I can see is like a dark ride just retelling of it. Yeah, because... But I'll, I don't want to go through Pleasantville. Because... It wouldn't really work in Fantasyland. No. It wouldn't really work where Haunted Mansion is because that's Liberty Square. That's the 1700s. It's the wrong era entirely. Right. I don't. I don't see it working in Epcot. I don't see it working in Animal Kingdom unless we have like we still open a new part of Animal Kingdom mm. that's just dead animals. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't see it working in studios. Hollywood studios. I don't think so. Unless they had, like, creepy world yeah. or villain world or something. I mean, I could see they have the animation courtyard over there, and there's no real, like, stop motion. They, they have, like, 2D, and they have, like, kid animation and Star Wars Launch Bay, my favorite animated property, over in the animation courtyard. Mm-hmm. Animation courtyard just doesn't make sense. No, but. it doesn't. So I'm, I'm really thinking, instead of a ride, what I kind of want to see is... I want to see a unit in the Booty You Parade. Yes. I think that's the most appropriate for the property because it's it's a spooky mm-hmm. Halloween property. And I, I kind of envision it like um like the float itself, instead of like performers on top of the float or whatever, it could mm-hmm. be like the cemetery with like It's like the secret with a life windmill. of pets. I was float. gonna say I was gonna say puppets like the secret life of pets float yes. for the universal superstar parade. Yes. I like how you got that. I was going there. But but it's the graveyard. But it's the graveyard. But it's the graveyard yeah. instead. And you could have all the weird, like, pet, like, you have weird pet mm-hmm. puppets on there. Like, maybe there's a big kind of kaiju, like, turtle one. Mm-hmm. And then in, in the front, you can have Sparky and then, like, uh, maybe 
bride of Sparky, like to his left. And- yes, yes, that's exactly what I want. But I also want to see all of the weird kids from school and stuff, and like some of the weird suburbia characters existing just as movers. Um, maybe maybe instead of like specific characters like all the movers like the dancers in front have like outfits reminiscent and like art maybe can be painted to be black and white that's what i i think all of it should definitely be grayscale because mm-hmm. if you can do the dead waltzers you can do you could do this, like grayscale movers yeah maybe weird contacts so their eyes are like little dots maybe or like maybe like weird like goggles almost that like give them like the Burton-y eye shapes. The the only thing that I would say is I would love it if there was a live dog. Yeah. <laughs> because they used to have one for for the Haunted Mansion unit. They used to have the... The, 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 the one guy. The groundskeeper. The groundskeeper with his little dog. And I think it's high time that if we can have Disney horses, we can have Disney dogs again and have just a black and white dog. <laughs> just in the parade and that's that is sparky that is media sparky i'm trying to picture this parade float that we've envisioned mm-hmm. and uh it even though it's for the halloween thing and it's based off of frankenstein uh yeah. creatures it's nowhere near as scary as the secret life of pets float <laughs> 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 which is terrifying i uh oh yuck I hate it so much. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the float's fault or just because it's Secret Life of Pets. I have an idea for yes? the parade. Uh, all of the all of the animal monsters are on the float except for maybe one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have the weird girl in the parade as one of the movers, but she has the cat as a puppet and mr whiskers in her arms as a puppet <laughs> <laughs> and he's just moving around and he has a little bat way <laughs> he can transform into a cat bat or something cat bat cat bat does it have to be human cat, cat bat, bat. <laughs> i think that the only way that this would work is, as a parade float though is if they kept burden or burden inspired films as a unit so that they would have two parade floats per this burden as so it'd be like a like a nightmare before christmas has to be included too yeah i think nightmare before christmas would have to get its day but this is in a universe where frank and weenie was so popular they had to do something so, in this universe, people are going to be like, boo, Nightmare Before Christmas. We want to see our favorite movie, Frank and Weenie. But, the, okay. So, the way that Boo to You already exists, though, is you get two parade floats per unit, right? Or, they changed it recently, but it used to be like... I was going to say, because the Incredibles are... Yeah, but before the Incredibles, back when it was not having the Incredibles... um. Like, Pirate Union had Peter Pan and had Pirates of the Caribbean. I understand. And, or Cowboy Unit had Clara Cluck and Clarabelle Cow. Yeah, no, I get what you mean. All right, so now, uh, Jaden, we have to decide. Was this a hidden treasure or does it need to be locked away in the vault, put away, get rid of it, we don't need to see it anymore? Hidden treasure. Hidden treasure by by leaps and bounds. Like, this will... I, I think this movie will join my Halloween, like, need-to-watch movies. Mm-hmm. It is so good. It's so good. It's so charming. The animation is great. The only thing is, I don't know how many times I can watch the scene with the car... And the baseball and the dog and the dog getting hit by the car before I, like, lose my mind. Yeah, I, I think I have to agree. I think, Jaden, when I when I set out to do this show, mm-hmm. this is the kind of thing I was looking for. Just, like, no one talks about it. It didn't make that much money. But I don't understand why. Yeah, it's, it's so good. It's a great Halloween movie. I think there might be some elements that are 
a little dumb. But yeah, that's what happens with claymation movies, no matter what. It's true. <laughs> every claymation movie has some plot points that just. Every Tim Burton movie has some plot points that just don't, you know, like, yeah. go completely. No. Um. Yeah. This might. This might be the best movie. That I've reviewed on the show that I hadn't already seen. Oh, so you hadn't already seen it either? No, I hadn't. Wow. Yeah. Mm, nice. Because sometimes on this show, I've seen the movie. Sometimes I haven't. This is probably the best one mm-hmm. that I hadn't seen. Yeah. I mean, I've gone along for some good ones. I've gone along for Pete's Dragon, which is one of my favorites growing up. The Rocketeer, which is one of your favorites going up. And Country Bear Jam... The Country Bears, not Country Bear Jamboree. Yeah, The Country Bears. Uh, and The Country Bears. Which is a perfect movie. Which is the <laughs> perfect movie in all the worst ways possible. Um, but I I think that this one is by far the best the movie. Most, this is the most genuinely good. Genuinely good. And and for that, I think, I think it's my favorite that we've reviewed. Yeah, it, it's definitely my favorite that I hadn't previously seen. I'd have to look back through the catalog to see what my actual favorite is and why Mm. it's the Rocketeer. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I can't share. It's okay. (laughs) The Rocketeer with you. My Halloween. This movie was great. Could have used more fighting Nazis. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Could have used more more of that. In New Holland, more fighting Nazis. Yeah, New Holland. (laughs) Come on. They're closer. Garrison, New I have Holland to fight is... Nazis every day as a part of my real life as a 2020 American. Nice. Good I, one. <laughs> I don't need my movies to be about that all the time. <laughs> they need to show you some tips and tricks. No. <laughs> <laughs> Get gangsters to do it. That's how they did it in The Rocketeer. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I forgot about that. This um, just became another Rocketeer podcast. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> My ultimate goal. No. Hello, welcome to Inside the Rocketeer. The Rocketeer helmet. Rocketeer helmet. (laughs) Movies from Inside the Helmet. We can barely see the movie because the eye holes are very strange. Yeah. (laughs) Jaden, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, Frank and Weenie review. Thank you for Um, having me. Maybe we'll maybe maybe we should do a mini sode soon about like the maybe next year. About Frank and Weenie, the earlier one. Ooh. Just like a little, little mini-sode. I am always up for more Shelley Duvall in my life. Let's just review The Shining. Yeah. Let's <laughs> For review this podcast. All of the 100 and something or other takes that it took for her to, to do the baseball scene because... <laughs> yeah. Stanley Kubrick was, was awful. He's crazy. Yeah. Some good movies, no. though. The Shining. One. <laughs> One good <laughs> 2001. Tim's going to listen to... No, Tim's not going to listen to this. He told, Tim, us. he told us he doesn't listen. Yeah, so he's... Uh, Tim, the Shining's 2001, the only one I like. 2001 Space Odyssey sucks. I, yeah, I don't mean that. that, Tim. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, let's go reanimate... We don't own any pets. Let's go reanimate let's... one of the plants that I keep killing on accident. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a tweet that was like, <laughs> I'm saying this to the viewers because I've already told Garrison about this tweet. I saw a tweet uh, that was like, your 20s are just you buying different plants and then killing them. <laughs> and that that's what our apartment is. <laughs> to- Hey, if you like the show, follow us at Into the Vault Podcast on Instagram, uh, or leave us a review on the Apple Podcast app, and uh, we got to go get those plants. See you next time. Bye.